Where are you on paying per mile when you're driving? Should we talk about it in more detail? Um, let's get to more information uh, on that. And, I said, well, I don't know how... I, 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 I've got a view on this, so I'm going to have to be quite cautious about uh, making the case. You start. Uh, now, uh, we've known for some time that some kind of pay-as-you-drive scheme is necessary uh, to kind of cut congestion, clean up our air, uh, and importantly, fund a transport system fit for the future. Uh, this is about making our, you know, modernising our tax system, making it fairer for everyone, including for those who drive. Um, and, and, you know, rather than just paying a flat tax, you know, when you're crossing the line into a clean air zone, this is about thinking about, right, only paying for what you drive uh, and having discounts for those who most need their car or those who are driving smaller, cleaner cars. Howard? Well, you just heard how complicated it already sounds already. <laughs> it sounds all cuddly and wonderful and every single driver wants to, uh, you know, be driving in clean air and their children to be, you know, healthy in, in a, a good environment. But pay per mile is totally and utterly unfair. It cannot work well. And for the years and years and years, uh, drivers have actually said they don't want it. Fairfield UK supporters, something like 80% don't want it. And recent polls, something like 58%, you know, generally, but I think the YouGov did it, uh, said they don't want it either. The point is, how do you do it? Because do you have something like a spy in the, a chip in the car? Do you use cameras? All those sorts of things. There's a lot of problems with the things like the Big Brother issues. But most importantly, we already have a pay per mile. It's called fuel duty. All right. Well, I just want to come back on this point about it being fair or not being fair. You know, the cost of driving has gotten cheaper and cheaper over years, whilst the cost of rail and public transport has just increased year on That's year. That's a different argument. But, but what I'm saying is, at the moment, we've got lots of wealthy people buying electric vehicles who are kind of getting a tax break because they pay no vehicle excise duty, they pay no fuel duty. There's a huge gap in our Treasury at the moment. How are we going to plug it? I think pay per mile is the fairest, easiest way. And I don't just mean, you know, charge people for how far they drive. Obviously, if you live in a rural area or if you rely on your car, such as care workers, you should be given a discount. That's the fairest way of going about but this. But I would say, how, how will you actually do it? I mean, realistically, I think the technology is already there. Google, Meta, Tesla... Apple, they know where you are every second of every day. And people are very happy to point. give up that data. <laughs> but also, people already have black boxes fitted in their car to get cheaper car insurance. So I don't actually think the technological argument is, 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 is a valid one. The technology is there. It's about the political will to implement it. And we've known, we've known this for decades. You know, the you know, Labour government, Tory government, Tory Lib Dem government, this new Labour government, they've known it's had to happen. They've been too frightened to put it in place. For, 50, for 15 years, I've been fighting the campaign Fairfield UK, and we've managed to freeze fuel duty in that time. We're still one of the highest tax drivers in the world, particularly diesel drivers. And so how are we going to tax, as I say, 44-ton vehicles? Because everything will be passed on to the consumer. I, if you drive more than five or 6,000, the Resolution Foundation, I think, is when you start paying more and more than you should do. I drive a car that is worth more than £40,000 or £50,000 and I have to pay £500 tax. I'm told it's going to go up to £900 next year. There's going to be a flat rate of 180 I think, for everyone else. So even if you drive a cheap car, and that's including EVs, EVs will be hit next year as well. The point is, what we need to do is have a long-term road user strategy to replace the 50 billion or 35 billion, which is the fuel duty plus fat, that they're going to lose definitely by forcing us into an unnecessary, needless 2030 ban. But I think long-term strategy is what we're thinking I about. I agree with here. that. So when we're talking about the climate change, we're talking about the climate crisis, that is long-term. <laughs> and when we come to these discussions, constantly what we're saying is, oh, but people don't have alternatives. This is about funding the alternatives. It's Fine, if you're using the road, pay to use the road, pay a little bit to use the road. But and don't that we can pay that with fuel duty? But a lot of EVs now don't. That's, that's the problem no, but here. They There's are going to start gap. paying it. And the, the point is what we're saying about this, and I repeat what I said at the beginning everyone wants clean air. Even people drive a dirty diesel, but they can't afford to buy an EV. These are the situations. The incentives have gone, even the London, you know, the scrappage scheme's been dropped now. All those sorts of things are happening. The motorist is facing anti-driver taxes more and more, more and in, guess what? In the budget coming up, we're going to see a 10p rise in fuel duty. All it is is about cash-grabbing and hitting motorists hard. How would you know me? I'm not anti-driver at all. No, I know. 
you know, this is about the right tool for the job, right? What is the right tool for the job? And we know for the climate, for our health, we need to get people driving less. So to fund the public transport system for the future and to have efficient EVs on the road and for it to be easier for disabled people, for care workers, Great for that, cabbies, we need to reduce congestion. And the way to do it is through this fairer scheme. Well, we need to stop actually making congestion problems up. Like, we've got cycle lanes the size of HGV vehicles, you've got 20 mile an hour limits, you've got speed bumps, pinch points. It's been that London, particularly, and we, don't forget this goes out to other cities across the country as well, are following a, 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 a sort of pattern which is actually hitting motorists hard. No one asks the motorists what they want. We all want but the same But that's a conscious thing. decision by the mayor, that's what he wants to do. Exactly, exactly. And, and from my point of view at the moment in time, I'm going to be fighting for the motorists for them to actually reduce this congestion and reduce their cost of driving. I also want clean air as well, so don't think we're fighting in one way. But I, I, I would say it's not cycle lanes that are causing congestion, it's the oh, fact it is. that... on Park Lane it is. I, I, I don't think... I think for the most part it is the traffic that causes There's congestion. There's already a cycle lane, for example, which, which Kay just said, already in Hyde Park. We put another one and then tell us to drive on a dual coach at 20 mile an hour. Sorry? London is a uh, is a city of 10 million people yeah, it's and growing. impossible to have for, for all 10 million people to have a car it is the most efficient way for people to get around by walking wheeling cycling using public transport and that's what we need to do is invest in our city why don't you promote public towns. transport being free why do we do that I would like to see public... Well, who's going to fund it, Howard? That's I would I would say a paper mile scheme. Well, exactly. As usual, you go straight <laughs> for the motorist. Fascinating stuff, guys. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.